So what makes a sound sound the way it does? How can you tell the difference between a tuba and a violin? Or a violin and a viola? Or a duck and a dog? Recognizing these differences usually happens on a subconscious level, but we can break down these differences by categories. They are amplitude and frequency. That's it. Some of you with experience may be thinking, what about timbre? But timbre is simply the amplitude of a sound's frequencies. Some of you may be thinking, what about stereo imaging? Well, stereo imaging is simply changing the amplitude of frequencies between two speakers. In this tutorial, we'll start with an overview about how synthesizers work. Then we'll talk in depth about amplitude, frequency, and how we can manipulate those variables with a synthesizer to create any sound. Before we look at Vital, let's look at another synthesizer for just a moment. This synthesizer is called Phase Plant, made by Kilohertz. The reason I wanted to show you this first is because of its logical layout. Most synthesizers have three types of tools, generators, effects, and modulators. Generators are simply what make a sound. That could be an oscillator, which repeats a sound wave like this, or a sample, which is a short recording like this. Effects alter the sound in various ways. One example is a filter. Notice how this filter makes the sound darker. The last type of tool we have is modulators. Modulators allow us to change parameters over time. Those can be parameters of our generators, effects, or even other modulators. For example, I can use an envelope modulator to change a parameter of our filter effect over time. Now the sound starts bright and gets darker. In Vital, we have the same three tools, generators, effects, and modulators. This area is for generators, this area is for modulators, and this area is for effects. We also have many more effects on the effects page accessible from the top here. In Vital, each oscillator also has their own additional effects here. So let's create a similar sound to the one we made with Phase Plant, this time using Vital. I already have a generator here in the form of an oscillator, so I'm going to turn on a filter effect here. Now I'm going to use an envelope to change a parameter of that filter over time. I'll talk more about what's happening here later. For now, just remember the three types of tools, generators, effects, and modulators. Remember how I said there are only two variables that make a sound sound the way it does? What are those two variables again? Amplitude and frequency. Let's discuss amplitude. Amplitude is volume. Is the sound loud? Is it quiet? Does it start loud and get quiet? Does it start quiet, get loud, and then get quiet again? How amplitude changes over time is referred to as dynamics. In Vital, we can see the dynamics of our sound in envelope one because envelope one is by default a modulator of amplitude for all our generators. Here, amplitude is represented by our y-axis while time is our x-axis. If I play a note right now, the amplitude will stay the same throughout the sound. However, I can click and drag points of our envelope to change the amplitude over time. As you can see, this shape will start loud at our maximum amplitude, then decay to silence or zero amplitude. If I drag this point, our sound will take longer to go from zero amplitude to maximum amplitude. We can edit this envelope by dragging these points, or we can turn these knobs. They do the same thing. Most synthesizers have knobs that control attack, decay, sustain, and release, or ADSR for short. Vital has ADSR in addition to a couple more controls. All of these controls, with one exception, control the time it takes to move from empty dot to empty dot, or in this case, amplitude to amplitude. Let's start with ADSR. 
Attack is the time it takes the sound to go from zero amplitude to maximum amplitude. You may notice a click or pop if the attack time is too short. That's the sound of the amplitude immediately going from zero amplitude to maximum amplitude. To remove this, we can just add a little bit of attack time. Decay is the time it takes the sound to go from maximum amplitude to this amplitude. This amplitude is determined by the sustain knob. Sustain is the only amplitude control. All the others are for time. The R in ADSR stands for release. That's the time it takes the sound to go back to zero amplitude when the note is released. Notice if I hold a note, the sound will stay at the sustain amplitude until I let go of the note. If I let go of the note before the sound gets to the sustain amplitude, the sound still uses the release time to return to zero amplitude. These filled in smaller dots control the curvature of the envelope and you can edit them by clicking and dragging. To return a value to its default position in Vital, you can double click its control. Double clicking a curve point will remove the curve. Vital's additional envelope controls include delay and hold. Delay is the time between me playing a note and this envelope starting. This can be useful if you're layering sounds. Hold determines how long the envelope will stay at maximum amplitude before decaying to the sustain amplitude. Hold is useful for adding punch to a sound. Listen to how much punchier this pluck sounds with some hold time. It sounds louder, but it isn't. That's because perceived loudness is loudness plus time. In other words, it will sound louder if it's loud for longer. That's an intermediate to advanced level concept, so don't worry if it doesn't make sense yet. For now, just remember ADSR. Attack, decay, sustain, and release. To summarize that, attack time is the time it takes the sound to go from zero amplitude to maximum amplitude. Decay is the time it takes to go from maximum amplitude to sustain amplitude. And release is the time it takes to go back to zero amplitude. Now let's talk about what else affects amplitude. If we look at our waveform in our oscillator, amplitude is represented by the vertical height here. Listen to what happens as the height shrinks. Now what might make that height shrink? Let's take a look at what would happen if I have an identical waveform with a different phase. This slider here controls phase. As you can see, the phase determines where in the waveform our cycle starts. If I rotate the phase of an identical oscillator 180 degrees, the oscillators will cancel each other out. Notice I'm playing a note, but there is no sound because any positive value here is offset by a negative value here and vice versa. The middle point represents zero amplitude and a sound is a vibration both this way and this way. Think about it like plucking a string on a guitar. If you look closely at the string after plucking it, you'll notice it is vibrating back and forth in either direction of its starting position. This number over here controls the amount of phase randomization. Notice how the volume is different every time I play a note with 100% phase randomization. We'll talk about why you might want phase randomization later. If you simply want to set the phase to a specific value, I recommend using these numbers here. I use this slider, which is accessible when using the sync effect, simply because it offers visual feedback. So to recap this tutorial, we learned that amplitude is volume. Dynamics is how amplitude changes over time. We can shape our dynamics with envelope one. To do that, we adjust these knobs here. All of them except sustain determine the amount of time our sound takes to get from point to point or amplitude to amplitude. 
The sustain knob controls the amplitude of the middle point, where our sound will stay until our note is released. On the physical level, amplitude is the height of our sound wave. If there are multiple sound waves, amplitude will be affected by the relationship of their phase. If the sound waves are identical and their phase is the same, the sound will be louder. But if the phase is flipped 180 degrees, the waves cancel each other out and no sound is produced. So anyways, that's it for part one of the tutorial series. The next video is going to be all about frequency, and then we're going to discover ways that we can use the vinyl synthesizer to manipulate amplitude and frequency to create just about any sound we want. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and thank you for watching. Thank you.